The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, has condemned the recent killings in Zamfara State. The minister made her position known following the invasion of five communities and killing of over 200 people in Anka and Bukiyam local government areas of the state. Describing the banditry as horrific, Omar Farouk directed that relief materials be sent to internally displaced persons in the state to cushion the effects of the sudden displacement. Well, joining us on the news now is a former director of the DSS, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Hello, Mr. Dennis. Good evening. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? All right. We also have joining him a uh, security consultant, Mr. Tony Avoyekan. It's a pleasure. Good evening. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank God. Happy New Year. I wish you the same, but I'm just not happy. This is for a situation. One attack too many. We keep repeating ourselves as we try to analyze it, the, the situation, and nothing much seems to be changing. Well, um, yes, because um, apart from some other variables that um, the government has not uh, considered, I think one area that uh, we seem to be shying away from is the fact that uh, Zamfara is um, a good leading region. And uh, we don't have to be pretentious about it. When you look at issues that have to do with things like terrorism financing, I know full well that um, the terrorists will definitely uh, look for means of getting their own fund. I, I remember that I've said this several that um, Zamfara is going to be a very hot bed. This is just a tip of the iceberg. If the government is not ready to take it headlong, uh, Zamfara is not like Bono, it's not going to be like um, uh, Meduguri, like Yubi, or like Adamawa. Zamfara most likely may be hotter than as it is now. Uh, because uh, it's just you do a juxtaposition with um, uh, what is happening in the Niger Delta region. Uh, uh, Zamfara is leading with gold. And uh, for such region, uh, the government has been very pretentious about that because um, the measure of security that is put in place in the Niger Delta, especially because of the oil there, if you do a comparison to what is happening in the Niger Delta, in Zamfara's region, you ask yourself a simple question. Are we seeing that type of um, vigorous security measure being put in place in Zamfara? Um, it, it's not just the issue of banditry or terrorists now, as they are, have been gazetted and they are being called now uh, terrorists. Now, but look at it from the fact that um, those that are sponsoring and those that are behind these several attacks, uh, where do they get their funds from? Who are their sponsors? Now, until the government make it right from that source, we most likely will have it more and more because in Zamfara there is money. All right, all right, Mr. Other, uh, yes. yes, yeah, Mr. Fayette, let, let's take it over to uh, Mr. Macri. Mr. Macri, a, yes. tip, a tip of the iceberg, he says, what we are seeing, the horror we are seeing, he says it's a tip of the iceberg. What's your take on that? Uh, definitely, I agree that it's a tip of the iceberg because uh, when you look at it, um, there was uh, almost a, a kind of um, a veil that they nearly used on the whole of the country where Belo Toji, who is one of the major um, uh, terrorist uh, group uh, leaders, came around to say that uh, he wants to talk. He surrendering and he wants to talk, and then of course he released a lot of um, uh, people at that time. Now, at that time, we want that this guy might not be just coming out honestly, because uh, immediately he released those people. The next day, more people were taken in again. You know, so um, what is going? What is playing out? Just like uh, Dr. Tony have said, there is resource, fight over resources in that state that I think the whole country has not woken up to. Because, you know, when you start comparing it to 
uh, what we have with the uh, Niger Delta. And when you also look at it, that uh, it is not controlled as much as the one that is controlled in the Niger Delta, uh, it's an open, open market. And remember, terrorist financing has to come from somewhere. Besides the people that are supplying their money or whatever, this is a very, very credible way of taking the gold and selling it in the black market and then, of course, using it to finance okay. their operations. Well, now that they've been branded, you know, categorized as terrorists, a much-awaited move, how do you see the game being changed now with this, you know, fight that we are having with this terrorist? And then, of now course, the, the supply of the Tukana jets that, you know, has been made available to Nigeria. How do you see things changing? Now, you know, there is uh, this uh, sales agreement that we have with the United States. In fact, it was not even, the, that was a part of the agreement because uh, the United States itself, since 1976, had this Arms Export Control Act of 1976, which stops anybody buying any kind of armament from the United States to use it for civilian purposes. It is supposed to be used only on either terrorists or military. Now, of course, the government realizing this had gone to court and then declared these people as terrorists. Fine. But now that they've been declared terrorists, we have to, people like Belo Toji coming out to say, oh, he wants to negotiate and all. Those are all ruses. Because what is happening now is that the fight is that far as good to escalate. It's going to escalate because they are also going to show that it is not just declaring us terrorists. We are going to tell you that we are up to the task. You know, and we are going to see more of those attacks, you know, as they move out and as the military uh, intensify the bombings of those guys. Um, I, 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 I don't see a very good future in Safara. Okay, but Mr. Fayetta, let, let let's move to Mr. Fayetta. Fayetta. Thank you so much, Mr. Macri. But just um, hold on a while. Let's make, move, move to Mr. Fayetta. Mr. Fayetta. Yes, please. How should them being categorized as terrorists change the game now? Uh, well, before now, um, legally speaking, uh, a bandit is uh, attended to through the normal uh, criminal jurisprudence of the country uh, without the uh, full instrumentality of um, force as it were. Now, you will see that there was restriction on the use of certain weaponry and uh, arms and ammunition because they are presumed to be more or less like common thieves. That's why you call them bandits. Uh, but now, the implication is this. Those that were sympathetic to them, those that have come all out to support them and even give excuses on their behalf why they were doing those things and why government should handle them with kid gloves, one will renege because if not, they will be presumed, though reportedly, as participants, premiers. That is one. Then secondly, too, the, the military, too, will now have the bravado to go all out against them as terrorists, not as bandits now. Now, another thing is that whatever weaponry that is used against them, there will no longer be the excuse that they are civilians because bandits are civilians. But when it comes to terrorists, terrorists is a different set of people that will be treated with the maximum force as far as presumably within the rules of engagement and all stuff like that. So you will not see that the way the military will attend to them, even when it comes to the arrest and prosecution, they are going to be prosecuted under the Terrorism Prevention Act and no longer under the normal criminal act as it were. So you see that it's a big world of different entirely. Those that are connected to them will be, will be charged or prosecuted as being you know, supporters 
and the sponsors of terrorism and not that of banditry and the like. You will not see that it will be difficult for uh, people like Sheikh Gumi and the like to come out all out with those type of defense and those type of uh, excuses why you should do this and why you should not do this for them and all those stuff like that. Right. Those funny stories you hear will definitely change because well, they are now terrorists well, this, and they this... are now going to be treated as such. Okay, well, this sounds like a good place to take a pause uh, from this discussion. We'll have to do this again some other time. Hopefully it won't be because um, they invaded another community, but to see that things have improved and then, you know, ask how we can even improve further. Thank you so much, Mr. Tony Ofoyeta, uh, security consultant, and Mr. Dennis Amakri, uh, former director of the DSS. Thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.